In this video, I'm going to cover the basics of the radio. We'll get into the more detailed configuration to use repeaters in the next video, but there's a lot of basic stuff to cover for right now. I am following the ICOM V80 manual as I go through the steps that I will be showing you. Your radio may be different. You may want to have your manual close by. A lot of the ideas are the same, the concepts of fundamentals. The terms may be different, the labeling on the buttons may be different and such, but the basic ideas are the same. You should be able to relate to what I'm showing here with the ICOM to a different radio. A real good resource that the manufacturers of all the radios provide is the ability to go to their website and download the manuals. I've downloaded the V80 manual, and that's what I'm going to follow in this video. But what came in the box is this one page quick start guide. Now, don't get alarmed. There's a lot of information here, and you don't have to know it all and deal with it all to begin with. We're going to pick out the basics to get you going. I consider the AA batteries as the universal battery. I have radios that take AA, scanners that take AA, um, flashlights, all sorts of devices that take AA batteries. So that if I'm at an event or away from home, I can always be assured that if I have AA batteries, I can always plug them in something. So that's one of the reasons I chose the AA battery pack, so that I'm ensured I can always have fresh batteries for my radio and not have to rely on recharging batteries. Let's get started. One of the first things we have to do is put the batteries in the radio. As I mentioned in the previous video, the V80 comes either with rechargeable batteries or if you buy the sport version, it comes with a battery case that you install AA pen light batteries. Okay, let's put the batteries in the battery pack. Six AA's are needed and so plus goes in this way and that battery attaches to the radio and it's got contacts so it just goes in there and there's a clip here on the bottom and there's the batteries on the radio. Okay so to turn the radio on we press and hold the little button in the top right here and the radio will beep and now it's on. We use the knob on the top to control the volume. And we hear the squelch is open, so the noise is coming through. We don't want to run the radio that way. So in this radio, you hold the monitor button down, and then you adjust the squelch with the up-down buttons here. So I'm gonna, there's zero, one, two, three, and now the radio squelched. And that's how we want to... We don't want to hear all that noise all the time. So now the radio is, is on in squelch. I just used a term you may not be familiar with called squelch. What this is is a threshold adjustment in your radio that you can set so that you don't hear noise, but you hear signal. So you want to set it just at the point where the noise goes away and the radio goes quiet. When a signal comes on, it'll be stronger than the squelch. It will break the squelch and then you'll be able to hear the signal. I just showed you that you adjust the squelch by holding the monitor button down. If you just hold the, button, the monitor button down by itself, it just temporarily opens the squelch so you can hear what's going on. Let's look at the mode switch here in the bottom right next. This is labeled VFO for variable frequency oscillator. This is the mode that you use to manually enter a frequency into the radio and other parameters. Typically, once you've manually entered the frequency, you would store it into a memory position. To recall memory position, you press the button again and it puts the radio into MR for memory recall. And now you can recall your memory or channels that you've stored into the radio. The third position on the mode switch is for the call memory. This is a quick access memory recall that you may want to store your favorite repeater or maybe a simplex channel, something that you'd want to get to quickly. The fourth position in the mode switch takes you to the weather channels. So now you could listen to a weather station that's in your area. One other thing you should be aware of, you probably don't have to change this, but I'll tell you about it. Repeaters in different parts of the country will run in either wide mode, which I'm going to say is the normal, or maybe a narrow mode, which is maybe more common in some of the large cities. This controls the amount of deviation, how wide your signal will be. In this radio, you change that by going into the set menu. So if I press function and then set and I use the up down arrow so I get to where it shows W slash N on the display here. 
this is wide narrow and the radio is showing me a W next to it which means right now it's set in the wide mode and I'm happy with that I don't have to change it just press enter and I drop out of the set mode tuning step is something else you may want to be familiar with the radio this selects the amount that the frequency will change when you're manually setting it if you use the up down arrows in order to change the frequency the radio has lots of different tuning steps as uh, I'm looking at the manual here 5 10 12.5 15 20 25 30 and 50 kilohertz I would just set it for 5 kilohertz and then you're assured you can get to just about anything so to set that in the radio you can press the function and the set and then we use the arrow here until we get to the TS and the radio is showing me 5 so I know that the radio is set for a 5 kilohertz step and that's what I want so I'm just going to press the enter button and leave it there okay so that's been a lot of the the basic settings of the radio um, your wide narrow your step size the, the functions of the VFO memory recall and such but now what we really wanted to get to is able to enter a frequency into the radio so I adjust the, um, I press the VFO MR call button. There it says MR right now, so mem memory recall. There's a C for call. For today. There's the weather. And the next position is VFO. Now if I want to enter, say, a frequency like 146.52, which is the national two meter simplex calling frequency, I would just press 146. Five, two, and I can either press the zero or it or after the two I could press the enter so to enter 14652 I just press one four six five two and I'm just going to press the zero I see a zero pop up next to it that means the frequency is now in and if I call I should hear myself coming out of the other radio here in the ham shack k7 AGE on 14652 QRZ and there we go. We've entered the frequency into the radio. Okay, so that's all I'm going to cover for right now. We learned the basics of the radio. We put the batteries in, adjusted the volume and the squelch, checked the wide narrow deviation, left it at wide. It's common for around here. We set the step size for the manual tuning to 5 kilohertz, and we saw how to use the keypad to enter a frequency into the radio. Next time, we'll put in a repeater frequency and see if we can get a repeater to work. So, a repeater needs, and this is your assignment, three things. It needs the frequency, the offset, and the tone. So the frequency will be the frequency that the repeater transmits on that you will receive on. Be an offset, and this will be shown as typically plus or minus. Typically the amount in the U.S. is 600 kilohertz. Now it may be different, different areas or, uh, you know, for a particular repeater. And the third thing is that Subaudible tone. So now, where do you find that? Well, you can look on maybe your club's uh, web page. You can just do something simple like a Google for you know, Sacramento amateur radio repeater frequencies and see what comes up. You can buy uh, repeater guides. This is an old ARL book from back in 2006, and it's just loaded the hundreds or thousands of different repeaters for around the area. So that's all for today, and uh, oh, if you enjoyed this video, please vote with a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please press the subscribe button, and we'll see you on the next video to configure the radio for repeaters. 73, Randy, K7AGE.